Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. In today's video is gonna be a very personal and honest Q&A while I pack for my next destination. I'm gonna review by the end of this video, so stick around to see where I'm going next. This will actually be my first Q&A here on YouTube and I think it's finally time to connect a little bit more with you to answer a few questions about personal life, life as a digital nomad. So I want to make this channel a little bit more personal and you to get to know me in a deeper level. So I put up a story on Instagram a few days ago asking if you wanted to know anything about me and I also created an anonymous link for the shy ones and I'm not gonna lie I got a lot of very personal questions and very spicy questions that I'm gonna be answering today so stick around to see them all yeah let's go to the first question I'm gonna be reading them here while trying to pack because I'm gonna travel in today so I need to start packing First question, where are you from? Are you Brazilian? Are you Italian? I get this question a lot. I am Brazilian. I am born and raised in Brazil. I was born in a city called Belo Horizonte. But when I was very young, my parents moved back to Sao Paulo. So when I was, yeah, when I was one, we went back to Sao Paulo. So I am a girl from the city, from Sao Paulo. People might think that I'm Italian because my surname, Mileo, is actually Italian. I have both passports, so I have both nationalities. I am Italian and Brazilian, so technically I am Italian as well. Like culturally and being raised, I am Brazilian. I do speak Italian and I also lived in Italy, so I think that's also something that may be got you guys confused. Question number two. Rafa, when did you start traveling and knew we wanted to do more of it? I like this question because that's where everything started. That's well, guys, I'm not packing. It's so hard. Like I see people like putting makeup on and and packing while talking. It's so hard. I can't do both. I'm putting my beanies. You guys can guess where I'm going. Obviously, it's a cold place. Okay. Question number two. It was actually when I was 18 and I was already studying at university and I decided to go to Chile to study Spanish because I wanted to improve my Spanish and I thought maybe it's a good idea to do in Chile, learn Spanish, meet new people and I was staying with this Chilean family, my host family and in that trip I met so many travelers and I met so many nomads on, on their gap year so I was like wow I want to do that as well kind of a, like a click in that trip but obviously I was studying at uni so I had to go back after and yeah so that was my first one that i had like a, a little okay i might want to do that forever and then when i was 19 i went solo backpacking in the northeast of brazil and i met so many travelers from all over the world and i was like wow that's so interesting i want to do that as well then after one year after that i went to australia and i think that's where i was actually like okay i want to do something different i wasn't sure still what i wanted to do but i was sure it was something related to traveling question number three what was your favorite place destination so far i also like this question but i think it's such a hard question to answer i could say good things about every country it's hard to pick one but i really enjoyed svalbard my trip to svalbard so that's a destination it's like i never thought i would go to a destination like that so remote so different one of my favorite destinations by far i also loved the dolomites in italy i think they're probably one of the most beautiful places i've ever been and they are underrated they are really really beautiful and that place like just feels magical like the lakes and the mountains i really like the dolomites i also really like scotland i love scotland now let's go to question number four my bag is starting to get packed i am actually packing question number four is actually a very personal question but i got this asked a lot and I will have to talk about that in other questions, so I preferred to talk about in the beginning of the video. Are you single? Did you and Jesse break up and why? Um, yes, I am single. We did break up back in December, so now it's been three months and I didn't post in any of my social media. I didn't think it was necessary because I do like to keep some things private from my life, but it's obvious that, I mean, I share 
places I'm going with people I am with. So obviously people started asking me, but I wasn't feeling, I was very sad. December, I was still very sad and very like the end of a relationship, a relationship that was for about a year and a half. Uh, and we were living together. He is also a digital nomad. We met traveling. So obviously I was very sad. But, you know, we and people asked why we broke up. I'm not going to like break into details and give all the information. But we just realized we are not. We're different people and we see things I don't know I think we see life in different ways I think I took longer to see that he saw it first I tend to be a very romantic person I tend to romanticize everything but then I maybe I don't see problems that are there I did that hopefully I'm not gonna do that in the future anymore so I think everything that we go through is a way to learn still grateful for that relationship but now I am single, so I <laughs> so now I'm back to solo traveling. Yeah, I'm back to single life. Okay, so now I'm gonna try to fold my jackets while I answer question number five. Question number five, I also got this question a lot, so I thank you guys is asking how did you learn English? I learned English at school. I did also like a separate English course from this school called Cultura Inglesa. But I don't think it was because of that that my English got good. I think it's because I was always someone... I changed the angle because the light was terrible. And I always loved different cultures, different languages. And I was obsessed with listening to English songs, watching movies and trying to repeat what they were saying since I was very young. So I think that helps a lot. My English really improved when I started traveling and when I moved to Australia. When I moved to Australia, I was really upset in the beginning because I couldn't understand what they were saying because of their accent. And they couldn't understand me because my accent was stronger. And I was like, what? I've been working hard to speak English for such a long time and they don't understand me, I don't understand them. But after a while, I improved. My English got much better while I was in Australia because I was living and working there. And also, uh, I think something that really helps, but it's having a relationship in, in English that helps a lot. My first ex, he was Italian and I met him in Australia. By that time, I couldn't speak Italian. I actually started learning Italian because of him, but his English was very good speaking English and I think my English got much better after that. I don't know how this is gonna fit. I think I'm gonna have to wear it. Why do you post in English? I decided to post in English since the beginning of my page. Travel with Rafa, zero followers. I decided since the start that I was gonna post in English for many reasons, because I was not living in Brazil anymore. The main reason why I decided to post in English is that I wanted to connect with people and share my story, share, inspire people to travel, to be a digital nomad from all over the world. Like I created this page because I love traveling and because I love connecting with other cultures. All my videos have subtitles in Portuguese. One day I wake up and I see a comment from Pakistan, thank you for inspiring me, or someone from Greece saying, oh, I'm in this place, let's meet up. For me, it was the best decision. And nowadays, I also love posting in English because most of my clients are international. And that's also very good, you know. I'm also gonna pack my camera bag. It's so heavy and full of things. Before being a photographer, I used to be able to travel light, but after being a photographer, it's a little harder. Okay, so next question is, how did you first move to London? I have an entire video telling my story of how I left the corporate job, how I moved, how I decided to buy a ticket to London one day and moved without telling anyone. So that video will give you all the details on that story. But basically, I moved to London right after I quit my job. If it's your first time here in the channel, I studied accounting in a big company and until one day I realized I wanted to travel the world. I had no, no idea how to do it. So I decided just to move out from Brazil because I felt like everyone here was telling me what to do, saying what was right, saying what was wrong. And when I said I want to be a travel photographer, travel content creator, 
everyone would tell me like don't do it oh that's why one day i decided to move to london what photography course did you do in london i didn't do any photography course i learned everything by myself just on youtube nowadays you can find so much free information that you don't need to buy courses if i could go back in time i would probably buy a course because i think the way I learned was a little bit all over the place. I think I took longer than if I had paid a, a course. But yeah, I didn't do any course in London. I got the question if I had a visa. I went to the UK before Brexit and I have Italian citizenship. So I used my Italian passport. That's why I can live in Europe. And also I could live in the UK because of the pre-settled. How did you monetize and left your cleaning job in London? So all these questions are related to my London life. When I went to London, I didn't have enough money to just like be a travel photographer and like change my life. So I got a cleaning job for almost a year and a half. So this person is asking, how did I start monetizing and decided to, to leave my cleaning job? It was a very slow process. While I was doing the cleaning, I was studying and trying to understand how the photography world and travel photography worked. And I met a lot of people, I did a lot of networking, and then slowly I started getting involved in projects, very slow. Getting messages of pe from people like, what are your rates? How much do you charge? And then I started getting clients. And slowly I started getting more photography clients, less cleaning jobs. And yeah, until a day I decided to just like, Go for it. The question is, what's the best nationality for a date? Um, I like this question. I would say maybe Italian. Because Italians, I think for like a one date thing or like for a few dates, they are very passionate and they are very... They are going to take you to nice places. They're going to treat you really well. The passion and... I don't know. I like... I like, yeah, I would recommend uh, Italians for a date. I don't know if for dating though. It depends. I mean, everyone is different. It's, it's hard to say. Uh, which country has the best cuisine? I think there are two in my mind. Italy. I love Italian food. And I love the way that they are passionate about it. Although they can be too serious about it sometimes. They can like overdo the like, you need to do this, you need to follow the rules. Uh, but yeah, I think Italian food is my favorite. Another country with very good cuisine is Thailand. I loved Thai food. Thai food is delicious, really. Like, I could go back to Thailand just to eat the things there. And then the other question is also related to food. What's your favorite food? Like, my favorite dish. My favorite dish. I don't know if I have a specific favorite dish. No, I have this thing for buffalo wings. People who know me, they know me that I have these things for, for buffalo wings. I don't know why. It's not even easy for you to find proper buffalo wings out of the US. But since I'm little, I think because my dad loves buffalo wings, we used to go to the US quite, not quite a lot, but we went quite a few times to the US. And we went to Buffalo once and we ate the like traditional buffalo wings. I don't even know if you guys know what I'm talking about, but it's like these wings in the US that they put this very not healthy sauce. But they are so delicious and you eat them with blue cheese sauce and it's so good. And I also love Pad Thai. I also love, love Pasta La Norma. It's a dish that I tried in Sicily. I loved it. It's like pasta with fried eggplant and ricotta. It's delicious, but yeah. If you take me out for eating buffalo wings, you can be sure I'm gonna be happy. Another personal question while I lay down on my bags. Do you do therapy? Yes, I do therapy. In every place, people see therapy in a different way. So there are places that like, oh, like everyone does therapy. So that's a very normal thing. Nobody's gonna judge you for that. And in some other places where people are a little bit more close-minded about that, people think that people who do therapy are crazy or like they have something off. I don't think that, I don't think I'm crazy. I think that therapy can help you a lot to overcome anxiety, trauma, not only like anxiety or like uh, depression, but maybe you struggle to organize yourself. You struggle to have a proper routine and you don't know why. And then you go to therapy and you understand it's connected to many things and you improve that. I've been doing therapy for three years now 
at some point I want to stop but at the moment I feel good doing it I do it online obviously <laughs> and therapy really helped me to understand myself to accept what I wanted and to really go for it you know and I really recommend not only for people who are super struggling but just if you want to understand something a little bit deeper about yourself I would give it a try have you ever fallen in love while traveling yes I did actually with my ex Jesse I mean he is also a digital nomad I am a digital nomad we met in a hostel in Croatia he was living in the next day and I was living in the next day but we decided to meet again in another country and we met in Italy and then in Italy we decided to become a couple is it easy to find a relationship as a digital nomad? I like this question when I started being a proper digital nomad and traveling full-time I was like oh now it's gonna be so hard to find a relationship and then I met Jesse okay we're not together anymore but I do think it's not as hard as people think because whenever you get into the digital nomad life, you will meet so many other digital nomads that it's not that hard. Obviously, if you're a digital nomad and you're traveling all the time and you meet someone who lives in one city, never travel, you know, is not willing to travel, that's gonna probably not work out or some, someone is gonna have to change something. So in that situation, it seems hard. But if you put yourself in the right places with the right people with other other digital nomads i don't think it's much harder than like living in the same city i think it depends on like actually matching with up with someone another question is if i ever get lonely i think this is a good question and the answer is not very obvious i think it's yes and no there are the downsides of being a digital nomad that you're always changing you're always with new people in a new environment and then sometimes you feel lonely like I just want to talk to the same friend I just want to talk to someone who knows my entire story you know I think the digital nomad life can be a very lonely life if you don't know how to do it properly like because you're moving so much you're connecting so fast with people that it could be a very lonely life but at the same time the again the community of digital nomads is huge and they are all out there if you connect with a lot of digital nomads you're never gonna not meet someone at the new place you know what I mean in my next destination that I'm going next week in I mean in two days I already know like 20 people because of the digital nomad community and if you have always these people you don't feel as lonely like now I'm in Sao Paulo so it's the place that I shouldn't feel lonely but at the same time like, I love all my family and friends, but they they have such a different lifestyle than mine that I also feel lonely here. I feel less lonely when I'm surrounded by creators, photographers, digital nomads. That's why I said it's not a, ob an obvious question. Like, you could be surrounded by many, a lot of people and feel lonely, or you could be surrounded by the right people and not feel lonely. The other question is, uh, what do I do if, when I feel homesick and how often do I talk to my family when I do I like to get rice and beans um, that's like the everyday food here in Brazil so I got I like to eat that when I'm feeling homesick when I'm feeling sick I like to eat Brazilian food because I feel like it gives me the right mood to get better how often do I talk to my family I should be better at that probably my parents are gonna be watching this and saying yes you need to be better at that i am better than the past nowadays i have like a like a group with them and i send them pictures and i say what what i'm doing where i'm going and things like that but i i think i call them every two weeks or once a week once a week when i'm doing good but every two weeks for sure i think i should be doing better i know people who call like their mom every day yeah I think I should I should do it better how did you get the courage to live your old life in Brazil and how did you know it was the right thing to do for me I would have been braver if I stayed in something I hate like I hated my job the corporate life at some point it was easier to quit than staying like it was killing me I think the braveness came out of like I was just exhausted of doing that 
and I wanted to change my life and I knew I wanted to travel and I knew I've always been an artistic person and that's that's what made me do it you know ah, how did I know it was the right thing to do I had no idea it was the right thing to do I was taking a very high risk but at the same time I didn't want to do anything else but we never know until we try it did your family help you financially in the beginning so when I moved to London I really, I t well, I didn't tell my parents I was gonna go and I had savings from when I was living in Australia and also a little bit from my job here in Brazil, but not much. Yeah, I bought my tickets with my own money and I told them I'm just gonna get a job. That's when I got a job as a cleaner in, in the UK. So I told my dad, like, I'm not doing that and expecting you to pay for my bills, obviously, don't help me. So I was working a lot as a cleaner. But at some point, when, when things started happening for like the photography side, my dad was like, can I help you with anything? I want to help you with this new journey of yours. Do you need a new computer? And I needed a new computer, so he bought a new computer. My mom offered me a drone. So I did get some help from my parents. I would be lying if I did, if I said no. Until I was feeling more stable not to have the support. Murphy question, if you could choose one lens for traveling to take with you, what would it be? My favorite one is the 2470 f2.8 from Sigma. It's my main one. It's so versatile and you can do so much with it. You can take portraits, you can take landscape, you can take like products, photography. You can do so much with those lenses. So for traveling for me, that's very good. If you want to do wildlife photography, obviously you need other lenses. But for the general traveling style, I think it's a good lenses if you need to invest in one. What's my camera? My camera is the Sony a7 III. How do you always manage to keep your motivation at the highest level? And then he was saying that I'm always smiling and, and things like that. He, I mean, the person. I don't know who the person is. You know, like... This is social media as well, and that's why sometimes I like to do some videos to show a little bit more of the other side and some of the realities. It's not all, every day that I feel the most motivated. It's not every day that I feel the happiest. You know, when I said I was very sad in December, I didn't post anything. I was heartbroken. I was broken after my after the breakup. And I didn't post about me crying. It might look like for you that I'm always motivated and that, that I'm always smiling. Yes, I am a pretty positive person. And I am someone that is very smiley. But I do have days that I'm down and I don't feel motivated. But then for me to keep going, I think this is my dream. And I want to inspire people to live a better life. To follow their, their dreams. To travel to follow that crazy idea and to do something artistic. And that motivates me so much. The messages I've been getting here in this channel, on Instagram, on TikTok, motivates me to keep going and to keep creating. Is, how do you make money? What's your profession? How, do, how much do you earn as a digital nomad? I have an entire video talking about that. I am a photographer, videographer, and video editor, content creator. So I have different income streams. YouTube pays me. I have also a video talking about that. Yeah, I have deals with brands that I create for them. I have brands that get in touch with me not to post, but for me to create content and photograph their product. I do video editing for other creators. My income can vary from like a thousand five hundred dollars to three thousand five hundred the months that i do like a thousand five hundred basically they are a little bit my choice i know i could be doing more video editing clients i know i could be pushing but i am trying to push other things i'm trying to invest in other things i'm trying to put more time here on Insta on youtube i'm trying to create more for my own content obviously it makes me make less money now but in the future i think it's gonna make my income go grow much more than what it could be. What are your future plans, like family or anything else? I, I want to have a family. I want to get married. I want to have kids, do all that. Obviously, I thought I was going to do three months ago with one person. And after a breakup, you feel like a little bit lost in that aspect but yeah i want to have a family i want to have kids i want to have a base and i want to keep traveling and i want to 
take my kids traveling. This is Aza's from Iceland and she always travels with her kids and I want I want my kids to be very like outdoorsy and you know like Patagonia kids. And the last question which I said I was gonna reveal by the end of the video and I don't know if you could guess by me packing. I didn't pack that well. I'm not the best of doing two things, talking and packing. But yeah, I am gonna reveal where I'm gonna go. I'm super excited. I am going to Argentina. I'm gonna go first, I'm gonna go to Buenos Aires and then I'm gonna go down to Patagonia. And I'm gonna be traveling around the mountains and I'm so, so, so excited. I've got some projects over there. I'm going to volunteer with World Packers and I want to share everything about that. I'm going to be volunteering in a place where there are penguins and there are whales and there is so much wildlife. I'm so excited about that. I'm thinking about organizing group trips of people from this community who want to follow a nomadic lifestyle and who wants to travel together. But before hosting it, I want to know exactly where you want to go, your budget, your dates, everything. So I'm, I'm going to put the link of the survey on the description. Please answer the survey and let me know. If you have any other questions, I will do another one of these in the future or you can ask me here in the comments or you can ask me on Instagram. Feel free to ask anything you want. I hope you enjoyed getting to know me a little bit more in this video and I'm super, super excited to take you in my next adventures to insane destinations and to introduce you to more people who have this nomadic lifestyle. So stay around that a lot of good content is to come.